How to make a coal-fired steam engine boiler plant, part 20, finishing the condenser and making the twin exhaust inlet. In this clip I'm removing the exhaust outlet pipe. Then I can put the boiler on one side and work on the condenser. I'm removing the drain tap and I'm doing this because I do not want it in a black paint finish. And in order to get rid of the paint I need the part to be immersed in cellulose thinners. As you can see, this is not just a tap, it has a long pipe that goes to the bottom of the condenser oil trap. So all you have to do is run the steam engine, connect a pipe to the outlet of the steam tap, and then open the steam tap. The exhaust back pressure will then pump out the water, followed by the oil that's floating on top of the water, into a suitable receptacle. And speaking of suitable receptacles, this is a plastic box with some cellulose thinners in it and it's that colour because it's old cellulose thinners, I do need to get some new. And just for the record, cellulose thinners is known as lacquer thinners in the USA. After a quick polish on the polishing spindle, this is what the tap looks like. So it's time to refit the washer and tighten it back into the hole. I haven't bothered using any more Loctite 542 because there's still some on the threads and with the copper washer fitted, this tap is definitely not going to leak. All I need now is to find my little Barco spanner and tighten it, taking great care not to let the spanner slip off the nut and round the nut and mark the top, which of course it doesn't because I'm careful that way. And I will echo what I said a couple of episodes ago, when using an adjustable spanner, always make sure the jaws of the adjustable spanner are fully adjusted up against the flats of the nut. And that way, owing to the thickness of the jaws of the adjustable spanner, it's highly unlikely to slip. But this of course only applies to good quality adjustable spanners. And I certainly cannot recommend using adjustable spanners of the type that you would get in Christmas crackers. And for once, I'm being serious about that. I once got an adjustable spanner in a Christmas cracker, a very small one, and I thought, oh, a small adjustable spanner. But it was totally unusable. So here's the work so far, rotating on my small turntable. And I'm quite pleased with it so far, it's starting to look just how I wanted it to look. There's still a fair way to go, but it's all little bits and pieces, nothing major. And I still haven't decided what to do about the bottom part of the boiler. But I do have some ideas. I intend to add a duplex steam powered pump to this plant. And as this is a single exhaust inlet, I need to make an adapter so I can feed the pump's exhaust into the condenser oil trap, as well as the main exhaust from the steam engine. So I need to make a simple adapter from a piece of brass like this, to allow the condenser oil trap to condense the steam from both the exhaust of the engine and the pump. And I'm going to make this part on the smaller of my two lathes, my little boxford. First thing to do as usual, is part off the end of the piece of bar, and I've recently changed the tip on this tool so it's quite sharp. And once I've faced the end of the piece of bar, it's time to take a longitudinal cut. One end of this piece of bar is going to be threaded 5 16 by 32 threads per inch. So I'm setting my micrometer on a 5 16 drill. Which is the way I've always done it because it's quicker than turning the little wheel at the end and observing the graduations. You have to watch it though because drill shanks are generally a little bit undersized, only by a thou or so. Once I set the micrometer using a drill shank, I would always check it by looking at the vernier to make sure it's in the right position. Sometimes to save a little bit of time, I cut with the tool both ways. I cut going down the work and then I turn it in a little bit and cut coming back. And the other reason for this is the tool is sharp at both sides so why not use it? I've always found that simple plane turning is quite therapeutic. It's something that you cannot rush, so it's best to go with the flow and just relax. Never force the cut, let the lathe tool do its job. And if you do that, you might get to this stage. The micrometer is telling me that this is exactly 5 16 of an inch. And the next job is to fit a centre drill in the tailstock chuck and drill a small hole in the end of the work and follow this with a twist drill and this is a twist drill of 3 16 of an inch in diameter. If you drill it too big, the thread will be weak, and if you drill it too small, it will be restrictive. So 3 16 of an inch is about right, because it won't restrict the flow of the steam into the condenser oil trap. 
A viewer sent me a tip. He said that when using a centre drill, you do not need to go all the way in. And of course he's quite correct. Just making a centre mark in the work is sufficient to guide the drill. And of course he was correct. But if you're making a steam fitting, to take a tapered union cone, you do need to drill deeper with the centre drill to accommodate the union cone. If you go in with the centre drill afterwards, into a larger hole, you are likely to get chatter. And while I've been telling you all that, I've just finished cutting a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch thread on this piece of bar. Behind both of my lathes are a set of shelves, and on these shelves in a certain place I always have some union nuts. 5 16 by 32, 3 8 by 32, and of course quarter by 40. I seldom use quarter by 32. It's quite useful to have these union nuts on the shelf immediately to hand, just to check that the threads I'm cutting are the right size. The next part of the job is to reverse the piece of bar in the chuck, face the end, and then drill down the centre, tapping size for 5 16 by 32. And tapping size for 5 16 by 32 is 9 30 seconds of an inch. Generally speaking, two imperial drill sizes down will be fine for a tapping size for model engineering threads, or as they're more commonly known, ME threads. I only drilled the 9 30 seconds hole deep enough into the work to thread it to take a union adapter. And as usual, to remove the sharp edge, a quick touch with the file. And the usual health and safety warning, please be very careful when filing in the lathe and always make sure that your file has a good handle on it. The unturned area of this piece of brass measures three quarters of an inch from end to end. So I now need to know where the middle is. And of course we all know that half of three quarters of an inch is three eighths of an inch. I then put the part in my cross vise on the drilling machine. I use a centre drill to initially mark the hole and now I'm drilling through 9 30 seconds of an inch. And after that, using a tap, I thread the hole 5 16 by 32 threads per inch, which is the thread on the exhaust inlet union on the condenser oil trap. And once the part is finished, it's time to fit it to the condenser oil trap using some Loctite 542 as usual, not 603, 542 is just the thread sealant. And then I screw it in place. Finger tight first, followed by using an adjustable spanner, what a surprise, to tighten it all the way in. At this stage you may be wondering why I'm doing it this way. Why am I using an adapter on one end of it? Well that's simple. If I decide that I don't need two exhaust inlets, I can just put a blanking plug in one end. And in this clip is the small pump that I intend to use on this steam plant. That should be interesting when it's all piped up. But for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.